Hello everybody, welcome to another uh, episode of Illusions Exist. This is episode 38 on uh, September 26th, Thursday, September 26th, almost Friday, September um, 27th, that would be. And um, this is a live episode, broadcast live from Maine pawn side and uh, oh lots of things going on I'm still having this uh, sort of a revelation about uh, not being able to judge life as a sum total it's a different it's some other kind of a it's more of a mini max or something a, a metric anyway as you can see the title on YouTube as the YouTube title is um, uh, what did I call it? Science deniers. Whereas here, I called it conspiracy theory. See the tension between those two definitions? All right, now this is an unscripted life. Why is it unscripted? Wouldn't it be better propaganda, Piero? Uh, we see you improved your audio again for this video. You must be concerned. Look, you got a green screen. It's a show. You must be concerned with its propaganda value. You want to push, uh, push that out. And wouldn't it be better to be scripted? Well, here's my script. It's just a three by five card with a couple of notes on it. Why do I even do this? Well, because then when I take a tangent, and I forget what the point of the, the video was. I go, oh, yeah. And it makes it, you know, it's a compromise between scripting and unscripted. But I like unscripted because, you know, I had been making some audio uh, podcasts, some audio videos, audio-only videos, <laughs> um, before I started using uh, YouTube way back in the day, 15 years ago, uh, about, I guess, and, um, you know, I'd, I'd edit them. And we did some, you know, I did some podcasts with some other people. And we had interviews of people that were like federal attorneys and stuff. Like one of the federal attorneys that got fired for political reasons, even though he was a Republican by uh, W. And and I would edit that. Mostly we didn't. I didn't take out any content. But if there was a big pause, and I'd tell the people, look, you can do a big pause. And an audio, I could see in the audio track that there's a big pause. If you do that, I trim those out. You'd be surprised. It saves a bunch of time and makes everything feel quicker. But then when I came onto YouTube and I saw Red Light Rocket, um, aka Thou Art That, uh, doing philosophy videos, just philosophy right out, not, not talking about politics or anything else like mostly us philosopher types that had to do. We had to find other subjects and we slip our philosophy in. It was just straight up talking about philosophy because he's a kid, didn't care. Fuck social norms. And um, I realized, you know, this is better to have non-edited videos because I want to see someone stammer a little. I want to see somebody have difficulty putting their finger on how to word a point or something. Um, I don't mind you thinking about it ahead of time, you know. Uh, saving us a little bit of time waiting around for you to get to your point. But then when it's time to get your point, I kind of like a natural as if you were talking to me version. Sure, you think about this a lot. You got a cup, you know, a spiel you go through maybe. But, you know, we met. We're, we're at, uh, you know, our friend Joyce's party and we're talking about the subject at hand. And how would you put it? You wouldn't have a script. You might have, you know, equivalent of some bullet points or some experience with your idea and that's what I like to see so that's what I do here in this show because it's not a show it's just meant to spark conversation but now that it has a green screen obviously a show but still not propagandistic basically is what I'm saying so the subject today is a conspiracy theory and propaganda so what the hell <laughs> Why does that constantly happen in this thing? Uh, it can't stay on the right um, 
window. I checked ahead of time and it flips around. All right, so the etymology of propaganda. We'll just talk about this a, a little bit and then we'll get into some of the... Um, oh, what a great day for impeachment, am I right? That's related. Um, you know, the, the Mueller report. I vindicated him. Well, you just keep saying that, I guess. Well, because it didn't. But that it's, it reminds me of, like, I have a conservative uncle. He's a smart guy, but it seems he's grown stupid with craziness over the years. And, um, you know, his idea of reality, it's like, okay, Early on, it's like, what do you have to want to impeach Trump over? What crime? And I would be like, paying himself out of the federal treasury to stay at his own hotels. It's called domestic emoluments. Emoluments, I've mentioned it before. You can't get paid for any reason. A bribe would be an emolument. Uh, knighting someone in another country's, you know, uh, royal system would be an emolument. Also, just money paying yourself that's a domestic emolument you can't get any money from the federal government other than the salary you're being paid to be president you can't send the air force to your resort and they can't go there on their own because you're only and his attitude was like, oh, well, I don't know about that. Well, it's in the Constitution. I showed him where it was in the Constitution. Oh, yeah, well, nobody else is interested in that. I don't hear any here tell of that. It's all Russia, Russia, Russia. And I'm like, well, I'm all emoluments, emoluments, emoluments. He obviously colluded with Russia, too, because all you have to do is read the Mueller report. Well, nobody's going to read that, sucker. Uh, so I can make up one of every story about what it says. No, not to me you can't. You can do that to all the people that aren't going to read it. Who knows? You might convince them because there is definitely people who just hear the reputa reputation of something. Like Lewandowski's hearing that on Fox News... They're saying, oh, Lewandowski won that hearing and the Democrats looked terrible because he just stonewalled them. Lewandowski was screaming at a representative, yeah, I lied to the media. I don't owe them the truth. They lied too. Well, you lied to the public. That's what the media takes that and put to the public. You lied it to the public. And he's just like, yeah, of course I lied. And, you know, it was the same thing in the Mueller report with a lot of them. Another notable one being um, Sarah Sanders, which is, uh, Sarah, was that her name? Yeah. And uh, she did the same kind of thing. Uh, in her case, it was about the, the FBI's when she said, Hey, the FBI agents have been calling us like crazy, saying they don't trust Comey. Well, to, to Mueller, she was like, no, that, I just made that up. And that, that's a win for them. Well, you know, you could keep saying that. And some people just hear, I heard that was very bad for the Democrats. They're going to lose. Oh, they're so stupid to be doing this impeachment. You can say that. It backs up against the flood, though, because for a thousand years, we'll be able to go, but just read the report. You don't even have to believe what the report says, but you can't say it exonerates him when... It does the opposite. If you just read it, you can see it doesn't do that. It doesn't exonerate him. <coughs> so anyway, people believe what they want, but that doesn't mean that lasts forever. And when you have something down uh, that is open to interpretation for the rest of history, you know, um, yeah, you know, they'll go, when, when, when the public opinion swifts and goes, oh, look, that, that actually detailed uh, almost a dozen clear obstruction of justice charges but he danced around it weird then public opinion will change and the and the conservatives will be like that's revisionist history well whatever thought is in flow so that brings us to propaganda now what is propaganda oops did the, did the size change in my window um it originally comes um according to uh eddie Edam Online, which I've been using for years, it's pretty good. Uh, propaganda, 1718. 
uh, it was a committee of cardinals in charge of Catholic missionary work, short for congre congre congregio. Let's see, congregio. No, congregatio de propaganda fide, the congregation for proposing for propagating the faith. A uh, committee established to supervise foreign missions. So. It can also mean any movement to propagate some practice or ideology. 1790, it says. So not necessarily a bad thing. Obviously, in our era, it's come to be known as a bad thing in that it's the false information. Um, I don't think there's much use in like preserving the other meaning, which is... I mean, for example, let's say I had a good cause. Well, let's say I'm mothers against drunk driving. Uh, you know, we used to go pretty lenient on drunk drivers to the point of it not even being specifically illegal. It was just reckless driving. The, you know, it wasn't that big. And yet, you could get reckless driving more or less automatic for being drunk and uh, unable to walk and stuff. But around the 80s, is uh, double check me on this, you guys, but I'm just saying roughly, you know, this mothers against drunk driving and other forces, but they were s super huge, um, came into play and they propagandized. You know, they sent out, there may you make a poster with a, with a baby uh, with whose parents are dead because of drunk driving. Or the baby's dead. That would be even worse. That's propaganda, but it's not a lie. But it's a message, right? Trump, you know, and maybe it's emotionally manipulative, but not necessarily a lie. But what we, what I sort of think myself as well, I just know this other history, but to me, the propaganda is more about lies. Like Pizzagate. Like the Clinton body count. Like, you know, these things. Like Obama's, you know, a Muslim from Kenya. Things that are lies, that most or half of the people that propagate it, not necessarily that believe it, but that propagate it, you know, no, it's just bullshit or slash don't care, you know. Because um, a lot of people are like, is it a lie? They, if it's an enemy, whatever, he deserved it. Is it fair to call him a fat slob? Doesn't matter, he's my enemy, you know. And that's the same with, with a lie or any sort of slur. All right, so... <laughs> impeachment has had a glorious day or two. I'm, I'm a bit giddy. <laughs> but that's not with the subject of this event. But it's obviously related. Am I right? Um, most of my audience is in Europe. So this is a terrible time to be making... A video for live people um, because you know because of my suave sort of hip audience sure they're up at 11:30 their own time but not main boondock main time this is one of my better episodes okay boom science 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 What is the deal with all the denial of science? You got your Gary. This is a huge disappointment for me. Because I was proud of myself to not judge Gary just on superficial means. Um, and, and to... And not just to, like, virtue signal. I mean, I honestly think, hey, you've got an anxiety problem or this or that. You're a hermit. I value your opinion. So it was a big disappointment when he went all science nut job, right? And I don't mind people having their own scientific theory. I have my own scientific theories. But what they do is they explain the science we've seen. They don't deny the science we've seen like science is a big fucking conspiracy. I don't like it, so I got my own system. No, it's like, to me... You know, I'm using science and the facts of science to go beyond what it says now and, and, and try to deduce myself things like, you know, what is the phenomena of life? Yeah, it's probably a computational network of water molecules 
inside a cell which drive a protein like it was a marionette okay that's beyond current science but it's based on current science you know the facts I'm not denying the facts like they're like the people at the USGS are you know trying to hide volcanic explosions in order to cover up for the fact that they're controlling the weather with harp and that kind of shit like Gary does or Hycliday does oh is that a slur no that's what you guys are doing you're like for your version of theories to be true there has to be this big conspiracy of a bunch of fakers not just people that were misled not just people that their biases led them to believe in theories that aren't true and see you know apophenic apophenia patterns that aren't really there because but they're projecting in you know like their science is a description of the faces in the clouds rather than the clouds themselves no not like that like they would have to be lying like having never done experiments they claim to have done and things like that and that's fucking nuts okay my interest in those kinds of theories is in my tolerance and enjoyment of them for example in the dissident science dissident science doesn't he does say that about scientists but he doesn't really have to his theories are more compatible than he thinks but he does have this sort of and so in, in a sense he's in this category as well but he's kind of in his own category um the dissident scientist um but um but like gary you know he has to trash him theoria height of the day to a lesser degree since he hasn't been talking about it a lot now what you want to say is pay more attention to the data. Here's the thing. If you are not an expert in something, right, and you doubt the experts, as far as I'm concerned, you have two choices. Uh, like, let's say there's mechanics in your town, and they say that you're, they call your car's engine an internal combustion engine, and they say there's explosions going on, thousands of times a minute and uh, it causes these all these pistons to be swing around just right and you're like that sounds a bit complicated I just turn on drive so you're doubting the experts in your town you have two choices one become more of an expert or two get over it and rely on the experts Right? If you're willing to learn how cars work and, you know, test it by fixing it yourself, that's one option. Or you can just face that you're going to have to let the experts handle it. Why? Because you don't, you are an ignorant person about that particular subject and you don't want to not be ignorant. So just leave it to them. And it's your choice. But you don't have option number three where you don't learn but you still say for example my cousin my best friend in my life who I love came up with this idea of you know he wasn't too sure about the ocean level rising because and he said I we had a science thing where there was we measured the water level with a bunch of ice in it and the ice melted and the water level stayed the same so he wasn't too sure about ocean level rising. He made clear that he accepted that the earth was warming, but not necessarily the ocean level rise. And one reason is because if the glaciers melt, well, there's still a bunch of lakes and rivers that hold some of the water. And it's like, dude, this, the scientists have taken that into account. When they say how much the ocean would rise if all the glaciers melted, it would be a couple hundred feet. And nobody says currently that that's going to happen. All the glaciers. They do that math. They, they do the math of how much is going to be held. I mean, just obvious ideas like that. You've got thousands of scientists. Even if one would miss it, it's just some sort of uh, Asperger-y guy who's obviously a genius, but he's also tunnel visions and misses something. <laughs> yeah, but there's thousands of these guys. They don't miss something like some of the water will be held in lakes when the glacier, there'll be a lake underneath the glacier. Yeah, there'll be on a lake. They do, that. that's part of the calculations. It's part of the plus and minus. 
And just thinking you could pull it out of your intuition, it's like these guys, like my cousin knows how to work on cars. He used to help me work on cars and stuff. He wouldn't think that I could just pull shit out of my ass and say, oh, Chevy works like this. Do this with the, the uh, I don't know, like the distributor cap and that'll fix it. And, and when I and he knows I know nothing, and I'm even saying, oh, I don't really follow this, because that's another thing. They'll be like, I don't really follow the politics, but this is my gut feeling. I don't really follow the science, but this is my gut feeling. But the funny thing is, with him, when we argue, he gets frustrated because I'll show him fact, because I know how he really thinks. Um, and so it's like, I'll know, well, you're missing this fact. If you knew this fact, because of who you are, it would change your mind. But it's not that way in general, right? There's plenty of people when they know the facts. Like some people, I was saying, look, they're having these baby prisons. Yeah, no, that's all like propaganda. Right, but it, once they realized it was really going on, they're like, that's a little bit concerning. You know, some people though, fully informed, knowing that that's going on, like Stephen Miller, who's making it go on, is like, yeah, it's a good thing. Because why? Well, because it creates a deterrent. Those kids are coming with adults, mostly walking them up here thousands of miles for a better life. If we make sure their life is shitty and they're separated when they're up here, well, they'd rather not be separated and take their chances down and rape Gangville, Honduras, than come up here. It's a deterrent. I'm sorry. Tough love, man. It's called objectivism. Being objective. Don't let your feels make you be too of a pushover. And they honestly believe that. My cousin does not feel that way, but if he doesn't know about the information, fine. Then there's also, though, confirmation bias where people look into this like in the flat earth. The fault, erath, as I like to call it, um, is a good example of that. When I was a kid, that was around, but it was semi of a joke, semi of people that don't care what the truth is and it feels good. Now, obviously, there's, there, there definitely is some, some, some faithful people because of how it feels. And people can look into that. Like, they always believed in the globe Earth, but then they got a spark. What? And they look into it. But they're looking into it from the idea of, yeah, oh my God, it is flat. And they get this strong confirmation bias. And, and even though they're going and consuming, all, like Gary's an example of this. So he's gone and consumed a lot of high quality talks by Susskind and on and on and on. He might have even seen Seth Lloyd stuff on quantum information theory. But he looks at it through confirmation bias. So he actually gets a tremendous amount of primary or almost primary secondary information uh, and tertiary certainly mostly uh, mostly quadrinary and pentitiary information through videos. Um, but in the case of watching Suskind, Suskind has done the experiment. So that's either secondary or tertiary information. That's pretty close um, to, to the numbers and the data. And, um, but because of confirmation bias, you know, he sees what he wants to see. And so you end up having, <coughs> when, you, when you get the data, you either end up with a well-informed well disagreement so Stephen Miller and I, let's just say we're both well informed on the concentration camp policy. And he's honestly for it. And he knows that more kids are dying, you know, like a thousand percent more uh, are dying per year. And, you know, and that they're going to be traumatized and have PTSD a certain percentage. He knows that, but he thinks that's part of you know, the deterrent. It's like people, there's some people that might think there really isn't, you know, a lot of man-on-man -man rape in prison. But most people in America know that that's happening, but think, oh, but that's a reasonable deterrent. What about, you know, no cruel and unusual punishment, you know, in the tradition of the United States Constitution and stuff? Oh, it's a good deterrent. So we just disagree, even though we're both fully informed. Though, people might sometimes don't always think through the things they're fully informed about because of the confirmation bias. But anyway, you do have well-informed disagreement about things. Even 
fascist policies because some people are just pro-fascist policies. Then you have uninformed disagreement. Like people who, you know, who hate on immigrants because they don't know they're not that dangerous. Who hate on immigrants because they don't know the bankers have stolen, you know, or the bankers and businessmen have stolen trillions more dollars than we've ever wasted, you know, giving welfare to immigrants or, 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 or having to arrest immigrants or whatever. And then you have the the propaganda form, right? The propaganda form of your idea, where ideas are formed. By stories you've been told because you're not paying that close of attention. So instead of watch the Lewandowski hearing, or let's say you did watch it and it's like, I don't know what they were talking about. And then you, you just listen to you, whether it's your friends or whether it's Fox News or CNN or MSNBC or a number of times, and blah, 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 whatever it is. You hear someone go, he, Lewandowski looked like a fool, which is what I would say. Oh, and the Lewandowski made the Democrats look like a fool. And you just take that idea. You're just like, man, people say, Lord, you know, everybody knows. And that's the propaganda form, the, the just what you were told form. <clears throat> All right, so I figured I'd go through five conspiracy theories to prove my point that some of these kinds of theories are real or known or become real or known. Things like, what was that called? The Tuskegee experiments where they experimented on African American people, you know, and some are going to die. Or there was this time, I know they released germs, the military or something. I don't remember the details. You can look it up because this will be enough to Google uh, in, in Daily City and they just released these germs to see how many people showed up at the clinics, you know, as a germ warfare study. And, you know, they didn't think anybody would die. But, you know, you release some flu or something like this. You know, sometimes old people die from that shit. And so these um, true things that we've discovered um, versus things half discovered, we never found out. Is it really true? You know, did the CIA import crack cocaine into L.A.? on purpose as part of this or that was it a rogue okay so what's always bothered me about conspiracy theorists is their lack of interest in discovered real conspiracies from the past um, and I'm gonna go through some but all of which that had a conspiracy theory status at least because sometimes you don't hear about the, the the conspiracy you don't hear about the crime let's say until it gets discovered, and then it's like, oh. But sometimes people have conspiracy theories, and it turns out to be true. So there's an interesting dynamic. So I'm going to go through things that are thought of conspiracy theories, starting from real and going towards fake. In the middle, they're neither real nor fake. They're just like, they're mixed. You don't know how much. Okay, first, or number five, working up. Iran-Contra. Now, when Reagan was elected, there was a story, there was the idea that um, <coughs> people were saying that he was working with the Iranians. And then when he was uh, inaugurated, like the same day or the next day or something, um, our, because our, we had had hostages held uh, for over a year in the Iranian embassy as a result of the fundamentalist uh, Iranian revolution. All right. And the idea was they were so scared of Reagan that they just released the prisoners. But the progressives said, that, no, uh, what happened is that Reagan had a deal with them. And, he, and Reagan had actually delayed the release of those hostages uh, in order, you know, for it to look bad for Carter. And then getting released right after was a part of that deal. And 
I did not think that was true. I thought that was a pretty crazy conspiracy theory. I mean, I didn't like Reagan, but that seemed probably not. If anything, people had argued that Reagan was some sort of a war hawk and he was going to cause a nuclear war, don't elect Reagan, and the Iranians probably were frightened of that. They wanted to get rid of this problem that had been going on for a year anyway. It was a problem for them as well. They wanted to, you know, do something that could create a balance or whatever. But it turned out it was because they'd been dealing together. I, and oddly enough, because there were still connections. Because after the Iranian Revolution, the Iranian secret police, you know, the CIA kind of people, were the same people. And they still had their contacts with the Israelis. And that was the context through which the Reagan administration was dealing with Iran. And it ended up, um, part of that deal was sending arms to Iran, uh, using the money to buy arms to send to the Contras, uh, who are narco-terrorists and other narco-terrorists in South America, and then to bring cocaine up to the United States. Uh, on the planes that delivered the guns. And that's their favorite president, everybody. That's the Republicans' favorite president. That's the kind of people uh, that are being supported now by all sorts of, you know, far-left liberals, Kucinich supporters, Tulsi supporters. So that turned out to be a real conspiracy, which I had doubted that was way deeper than I thought. And the people involved with that, like Bolton and Oliver North, have been with us ever since, lifted to fame, because that's what conservatives like. JFK, number four, JFK. All right. Now, when I was a kid, it was really sold strong among the working class and regular people, um, the JFK conspiracy. And the most probably compelling part was the story they told about how it was impossible for a single bullet to have killed JFK and whatnot. And they talked a lot like the bullet bounced all around, went through JFK eight times. No, it went through JFK and the guy in front of JFK. And, you know, probably was a straight line bullet. A little bit of twisting, maybe, but basically a straight line bullet and ideas to the contrary based on you know the limited knowledge of how are the bodies oriented and stuff um, so I don't think the single bullet theory is nearly as justified as you know as I was taught when I was young and until I was able to look in my 20s and get more information you have it was really hard to get real information before the internet now there's a lot of noise but if you know what you're doing you can dig down Obviously, most of you don't know what you're doing, but you could, and you could dig down. Um, so that multi-shooter theory, not particularly well supported, as it turns out now. Sorry to tell you guys. On the other hand, the idea that um, he that there was just one conspirator, that's ridiculous. You know, the, the theories that... that um, the mob and the Cuban coalition and and even LBJ uh, that there were more people behind it that's very well I think that's very well founded even though we don't know the details exactly and you know I, I personally still think that yeah it looks like it was a Cuban slash mob which of course there's an overlap the Cubans that got kicked out of Cuba were in Cuba, which had a bunch of casinos and a lot of mob influence. So, and by the way, you know, these things are open to, you know, I don't keep up on everything or, or, or debunk everything. Maybe I'm being too conspiratorial. See, this is part of the off the top of the cuff kind of thing. So I'd be interested if anybody has other information or things they'd like me to look up um, to, to learn more about. Um, ideally, factually oriented stuff, not... Uh, uh, not, uh, well, anyway, leave it at that. So, three, 9-11. Now, the 9-11 conspiracy 
super interesting because first of all there's plenty of videos you can see of like trucks that catch fire underneath overpasses and melt the overpasses in the steel you know the whole idea of the melting point of steel it's like go back to science class you guys because the melting point of steel is not the only issue steel starts to warp and become unstable way before its actual fluid melting point building number seven you could see parts of the buildings falling into building number seven there's films from the back side of number seven that show the whole thing was burning and the walls were broken out that one side that they always love to show that the free fall fall that was just the front of the building it was all burnt out by then okay on the other hand there is a thing called the august pdb which was a presidential daily briefing in august um, warning that bin Laden was determined to hit America they had information on the idea it was even in the popular there was a book even or whatever in fiction and whatnot but I read that but there was some talk because we had a whole era of kid of um, not kidnappings but hijackings of planes and people to make them fly all over the world but there was a little bit of a whisper of using them as weapons and suicide bomb, you know, ideas. And and the August PDB, Bush was told, he was down in Crawford, if I recall correctly, uh, Texas, at his, his little brush clearing ranch there. And, you know, he was told um, that something was going to happen. And the project, the PNAC project for a new American century where, you know, a Wolf and I think Cheney and Rumsfeld and all these guys had been, you know, it said things about us. We need a Pearl Harbor. And they had this idea of letting the enemy hit us so that we could do this stuff they did in the subsequent 20 years, you know, so we could go hog wild and have a war again. Because you kids don't remember, but after Vietnam, we were scared of the first Gulf War. The, the Daddy Bush one, well, really, there was a Grand Daddy Bush, so that, that's Daddy Bush, I guess. Um, H.W. Uh, even, um, well, anyway. I'm getting off 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 the uh, off the reservation here. Uh, the The point is, so 9/11 was knocked down by two planes, but they seemed to let it happen. And um, how much? I, I don't know if they had any more information. They didn't set the bombs. I don't think they didn't have to. They just had this theory of what you could do so that you could go into 9-11, I mean, into uh, Iraq and whatnot, because Bush, the, the H.W. Bush, was afraid of another Vietnam, and that's why he, you know, just bombed them a little and kicked them out of Kuwait and didn't go to Baghdad. Okay, conspiracy number two, the moon landing. This pisses me off. We went to the moon. You're a moron. I love you. Come on, I love you, morons. I don't hate you because you're a moron, but you need to realize that we did land on the moon. And then the flat earth, or the fault e -rath, as I like to call it. You can actually determine this yourself. You, you can put a stick in the ground, or better yet, put a frame and hang a plumb line. So with a big lead weight, ideally upside down teardrop, so that there's a point, and it points right to the ground. You make a, and then you just measure and mark on the ground. Measure, make a platform, level the platform. But it doesn't actually have to be perfectly level. But you need to know if it is level or not. Make a level platform. Put this thing, plumb line, and then measure and mark the shadow from all the points but especially from where the plum is all year all year right when when it's actually overhead not just noon you could do that mark at noon as well but you need it when it's actually overhead it'll make it mathematically easier 
But basically, if you mark that all year round at certain times and write the times down, in there is the math to figure out you're on a circular globe. If you compare with somebody else's measurements. And there's a bunch of other ways to figure it out. So you should do that. And you don't get to say, oh, I got lied to one time. We were lied to about this. Oh, the scientists were wrong one time. That's not good enough. Yeah, everything can be doubted. But remember, either you listen to the experts and take their advice, or you increase your own expertise. One or the other. And when you increase your own expertise, but you don't keep your mind open to the truth, you're trying to push your own propaganda instead of find out what's going on from the facts, well, then you're part of the problem, in my opinion. But that doesn't mean you're a bad person. You're a perfectly fine person. We're all just monkeys. What do we expect from you? Not much. You're not a bad person. You're just wrong about reality. You could become right about reality or you can not sweat it and just be a nice person and it doesn't matter. Because if you're a nice person and you're nice to your pet and your kids and your wife or your husband, then it's actually okay if you want to believe in a flat earth. But don't vote. Because if you can't be bothered to find the facts out of things, then you probably shouldn't have voted. But that's okay because a person like you doesn't need to vote. Why? Because you're a cool, easygoing person. You like feeling out life and just being groovy. You don't like facts and figuring out this or that, the other. So don't, don't sweat it. Cheers.